a wonderful positive attitude and all the best intentions in the world will only get us so far. The other day, my car broke down and I immediately jumped into positive attitude mode. How do I turn this breakdown into a winning breakthrough? I had the right mindset and I had a clear vision for a successful outcome, but ultimately I failed. I ended up getting a breakthrough. It's just, it's not the breakthrough I'd been hoping for. If we don't stay present to our challenges as they arise and stay in the moment with our difficulties, we can lose ourselves in the struggle. We must face our fears and sit with our pain to keep track of who we want to be when we face life's many, many tests of character. So the other day, I'm on my way into the office in Boulder and my car breaks down. I hit this massive asphalt, big chunk of asphalt sitting in the middle of the road. And uh, my car was very quickly immobilized. Luckily, I made it off the main road and onto a side street, but it was clear I wasn't going anywhere. My car would need to be towed. Well, hey, no problem. I have a fancy car. I have a lovely warranty service. I'll just call roadside assistance. So I picked up the phone. They gave me a two hour quote uh, to get a tow truck. Well, I was disappointed, frankly, that I'd have to spend two hours sitting in my car. But I thought to myself, how do I make this breakdown a breakthrough? How do I approach this with a positive attitude? I decided right then and there, you know, I could enjoy some time, a couple hours, to myself, to be quiet, think about how I want to serve better, how I want to show up better for the coming week. I even posted an IG reel talking about this. On Instagram, I talked about turning a breakdown into a breakthrough and how I was going to turn this into a positive moment for myself. I talked about how I was going to take a little moment to reflect about how I wanted to serve better. Better. I was grateful. I was positive. And I truly, truly meant it because I know these moments where we're held back in some way, these are the moments we need to pay attention to. So many times, these are the moments that are forcing us to pause for a very good reason. Well, knowing I had a couple hours and knowing I had just consumed a very big Starbucks latte, I decided to walk to the store about half a mile away, find a restroom, maybe find a snack. I figured I'd grab some coffee maybe, get some steps in. My car was in a no parking lane, but I left it with the hazards flashing and I was gone about an hour. I came back, I consumed my coffee, I spent some time on social media, I thought about what I wanted the rest of the week to look like, um, and right about the two hour mark I started getting excited. This is going to be nice, I'm out of here, it's been a lovely morning, but I'm ready to go. Well, I got a call from roadside assistance that said it's going to be another 30 minutes before the tow truck gets there. Well, the tow truck showed up at about the three hour mark. I was starting to get a little irritated, but he showed up just in time. I was happy he was there. Uh, and I waited as he um, pulled the, the tow truck back. He put the flatbed down. He got into my car and started pulling up to the flatbed. And I realized very quickly he was going to damage the underside of my car because of the angle of his flatbed. We need some wood blocks or something so that we could get the car on without any damage. So I stopped him. He went digging in his massive tow truck for 15, 20 minutes. And he came out with one wood block. He couldn't find the other block and basically said, sorry, dude, can't help you. <laughs> and he loaded his stuff up and left. That was it. So I called back to roadside assistance. I explained what had just happened, expecting at least some sympathy for my situation. Got no sympathy. They, they really didn't care, quite frankly. Uh, they blamed me, in fact, for not telling them that my car had a lower clearance. Well, this was the dealership's or the, the, the car company's roadside assistance. So I assumed when I gave them the model of my car, they knew about the clearance. The heat 
was starting to rise. My kindness was quickly evaporating. I was promised though that I'd get an expedited tow. And since it was expedited, I didn't want to leave the car again and risk missing the tow company. So I sat and I waited and I waited and I got no updates. I got no information when I called in. I called in three or four times to roadside assistance and every single time I had to go through the same irritating phone prompts. I had to wait on hold for 10 or 15 minutes. And by the time I'd get to somebody, I was fuming. There was no positive attitude left. Three hours later, they were still working on getting a tow. I was starting to lose my mind. I had not left my car now for about four and a half hours. My back was hurting. I needed to use the restroom again. I was very low on blood sugar and getting angrier by the moment. I was also getting lots of dirty looks from the neighbors as they went back and forth and back and forth and kept seeing me uh, because I was taking up a partial lane of their road in a non-parking uh, lane with my hazards flashing, but nobody seemed to care. At this point, I was irate. I was getting no answers, no caring, no solutions from roadside assistance. And unfortunately, with each call that I made to them, I got less kind, I got less patient, and I certainly was not the human being that I hope I can show up as. I was certainly not living to the best of who I am. Well, at seven hours total, the driver finally showed up, nice guy, no issues loading the car, and that day ended up basically being a total loss. But most of all, rather than just losing the seven hours of time that day, I was super disappointed that I hadn't managed myself better, especially when I'd started the day when this issue became obvious, I promised myself I'd be positive and turn this into a win. But my core values were not there. Um, you know, my core values are to be present, to be inspirational, to be loving, to bring the love. But when push came to shove, I showed up with anger, resentment, and as an entitled jerk. I know what you're thinking. A positive attitude is all you needed to make this experience better for yourself, Grant. I call BS. Sitting in a car for seven hours, getting strung along bit by bit with fails prom failed promises, dealing with a rude, indifferent person after rude, indifferent person, I bet you get pretty irritated too. A positive attitude and the best intentions just aren't always enough to get us through. So what can help us get through the tough days, the annoying moments, the trying times? Here are the top 10 things I will do next time to show up better on tough days like that day. Number one, I'll take a moment to be still, to meditate, to close my eyes, whatever it takes. In high performance coaching, I teach a simple release meditation. That would have been just the ticket that morning. But of course, I didn't think of it. Number two, I'll breathe. You know, when you take a deep breath in, your heart rate quickens slightly. And as you exhale, your heart rate slows. Repeated deep breaths will naturally bring your heart rate more in sync with your breath. And this leads your brain to release endorphins, which are chemicals that have a natural calming effect. Boy, did I need a calming effect that day. Number three, I'll remember my values and my mission. I wanna be present and inspirational and bring the love. I lost track of who I wanna be. Number four, I'll ask for what I need. I had access to a long list of people that would have sat with me for a bit, would have made calls for me, would have brought me food. All I had to do was ask for help, ask for what I needed. In fact, I got offers that day. All I needed to do was say, sure, yes, please help. Number five, I'll tap into my sense of humor and ask, what's funny about this struggle? 
Number six, I remember that people I encounter are not obstacles to what I need. They are people with their own needs, and I'll treat them as such and honor them first. I sure wish I could have shown up with a little bit more love for each of the people I met along the way that day on the phone. Number seven, I can always choose to exit a conversation when it's not working. For me, this is often most important as I feel the heat rising. Sometimes a timeout is the best solution. Number eight, when I do get angry with others, it's best to stick with I statements. This keeps the focus on expressing where I stand without blaming, naming, naming or berating others. Number nine, there is always another solution that is just to the left or just to the right or just behind me. I'll keep the field of vision 360 degrees to allow for all possibilities. Number 10, I will ask myself, what's really going on here for me? For me, I had an outsized reaction that day because I was triggered knowing I was stuck with nowhere to go. This is a massive trigger for me after spending time homeless. The scariest part for me about being homeless is being there on the street and you really have nowhere to go. Well, funny enough, I was stuck in a luxury car with ready access to resources, yes. But being stuck was still triggering that trauma for me. And if I could have seen the real depth of what was happening, maybe I could have acted a little better and been a little kinder. Bonus, sometimes there's simply no one coming for you and it's time to take matters into your own hands. I was so stubborn about being served by roadside assistance, which I had paid for as part of my warranty service, that at no time in the seven hours did I even consider simply calling a towing company, calling them myself, saving myself. It's really darn clear now how lost I was in the moment and in the mess of being stuck on the side of the road. I abandoned my tools, my reason, my sense of humor, and my kindness. It happened bit by bit, and I'm determined to learn what that day was trying to teach me. Next time I find struggle, I'll pause, I'll slow down, I'll remember who I want to be, I'll ask for help, I'll show a generosity of spirit, and keep a broad watch for answers that might be on the horizon. I hope next time I'm proud about how I respond to challenge. I'm grateful for every opportunity to grow, even when it doesn't feel so good. So what's your story of struggle and defeat, my friend? Or struggle and triumph? Tell me all about it below.